The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. And AJ Appleton. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. What's up, man? What up? I was going to say, are you going to talk? You're just going to wait, but okay. All right, good stuff. <laughs> um, all right, man, so got a pretty big show tonight. Uh, going to get into some buy low, sell high now that we're around quarter way through the season. Uh, cover injury news, do our picks for the week as usual. Uh, but Let's not waste any time here and get into our beer of the week. Mm, beer. Uh, what you got going on? Oh, I went down to my local beer shop here, Christo's Discount Liquors. and uh, Are they, are they paying liquors. you? That, that's something I don't know about. <laughs> I, not that I know of. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, they're uh, the the best beer store close to me best selection of all kinds of really good beers so usually where i go stop there tonight had to re-up on some things and uh went in trying to like actually read cans this time and find a good pumpkin beer instead of the garbage i bought like a couple weeks ago with that weed malt liquor um <laughs> so I've, I've such a weird I've gone in and totally redeemed myself. All right, and uh, picked up the pumpkin, but it is their new pumpkin nitro imperial pumpkin ale, eight point six ABV. And when I cracked this thing, it was just like, drink me. It's phenomenal. It's so good. Oh, um, I, I don't, oh. I don't, I don't really know what to say about that reaction there. I'm My a, beer. I, I know you're not a big nitro guy, but no, just man, just your delicious. reaction about uh, it, how it opened. So, so mine um, can opened rather normally. Um, it was it's a Ballast Point Fathom IPA. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, man, it's not my favorite. It's it's just kind of a blah IPA. Really nothing special to it. I only gave it a three and a quarter on untapped. I probably could have gone lower, honestly. It's wow. probably not that I'm going to buy again, I'll be honest. There's much better out there in my book. So, uh, But, I mean, Ballast Point has a lot of other good stuff. This one just doesn't do it for me. So, whatever. <laughs> Uh, so right now we've got the Rams and the Seahawks on TV. Seahawks are up currently 14 to 6. Uh, so we'll kind of react to big plays as they happen. Um, not, not timely for me. I'm not about three we'll plays to, behind you. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe you so, should react to the big plays and then I, yeah. will, I will react. Maybe like, oh yeah, I, I already saw that. And then I go, and then I go yeah, and then you're like, Damn it. <laughs> Be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Let's get into some news and notes leading into week five. Uh, drama. Drama, man. Drama in Minnesota. Uh, Adam Thielen calls out Kirk Cousins. Uh, apparently, Cousins apologized. <laughs> I didn't know about that. I didn't hear it. Um but and then now Stefan Diggs, you know, he didn't show up to practice on Wednesday. He did practice today, but he was just throwing on the side with the backup quarterback. <laughs> like not good. Not good at all here, guys. Um, you know, I, I don't think Diggs is gonna go and not play, but it's just one of those like this is is not good. Apparently there's a lot of blame going around on cousins. As there should be, man. I mean, he's making a shit ton of money at this point, right? And he needs to be playing a lot better than he yeah. is. And, 
He's overthrowing Diggs. He's overthrowing Thielen. It's just this is not good. Um, I mean, I, this this whole situation. I'm, I'm just going to start off because I have to. It, it reminds me of the the kids' book that we've been reading, Llama Llama Red Pajama. What's with all this crazy drama? Um, it's. It, I mean, Cousins went out, I, and I didn't know about this apology thing until I looked at ESPN earlier today. And it's like Dan Orlovsky is on there with. I don't, I don't, I don't even remember the guy's name. Maybe Marcus Spears. I don't know. Bigger, bigger dude, former player. Um, some female announcer and another male announcer talking about this, and it's like he's like, "Oh, this is weak sauce, man." Blah blah blah. I'm like, "Come on, really? Like, this is what we're saying on on national TV now? What is this? An Instagram of from a high school, you know, girl?" What are you doing? Weak sauce. What was this? Was this ESPN? It was ESPN. I mean, it is the TMZ of That's, sports now, it, so it, well, I, yeah, I will never. Yeah, I get that. Get away from that. But so it was I, just like kind of I, I did. I will say I did like his ex, explanation, but just just the, the the weak sauce. Like, come on, that is weak sauce, Dan Orlovsky. <laughs> get with the times. You're not anyway, a freaking so let's, teenage let's girl. Let's look at. Let, what I mean, what are we thinking here? Fantasy value for I'm obviously cousins out, dude. Like the, you can't no. roster him at this point at all. No. But I mean, like, and I know nobody's cutting Thielen, nobody's cutting Diggs, but I mean, are you still starting these guys? We could like no doubt start at this point. I mean, I, I own Diggs in a lot of different leagues this year and I had really high hopes for him. I didn't really want Thielen and I knew I wasn't gonna get him anyways. He always falls apart in fantasy playoffs as it is. So you know, he needs to apologize to his damn fantasy managers that put all their stock into him and then lose championships because of him. Uh, this feels like a personal thing, man. It, it, probably. I don't know. Probably. I, I, I'm sure. No yeah, doubt. Sure somewhere. No doubt. That, it, that it's happened. Thing. But um, Diggs has been bad this year, man. I mean, he just hasn't really been worth a third round pick. Um and you know it's still it's only five whatever you know week five that we're going into so i don't know i just think that that i'm not i'm not cutting bait on any of these guys not named cousins right now uh but i need to see what they're what they're gonna do here i mean this trade news was crazy to me too that came up on the fantasy life app i saw that today i was like right Oh man, that was a catch. My boy, Will Disley. <laughs> All you jokers were laughing at me for that pick. Look I at us I now. At you Look at us now. To where you drafted him, not because you drafted him. I took him late, but not where late. you. You took him like five I took him, and then I think I took like two defenses, and that was it. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I'd have to look at it again. That was probably hey. earlier than that. Um, yeah, dude. I I don't know. I mean, this is this is just nuts, man. Like honestly, I've got I've got Diggs in one league, and I've got a couple options. Like I've got like Deontay Johnson, who I picked up. So like, I don't think I can do it, but I think I I'm tempted, man. You know, it's just guys like that who I'm I'm tempted like just to uh, pull the. Pull the plug on Diggs, man. Set him on the bench until they until they figure this thing out. Um, Thielen is still kind of getting it done for you know whatever reason, so I don't think you can bench him at all. But Diggs has been really bad outside of one week, and I, with him now requesting trade, this is I don't know. This is just a bad situation. Yeah. Um, it, mean, he's it, saying he's is it weird to say that? that God, okay. the Redskins actually get one right. <laughs> I mean. I, like, I think so. Like that yeah. that's what the guy uh, Orlovsky was kind of talking about. He's like, you know, Thielen doesn't know anything that's going on in Cousins' head. You know, he's he's running around, he's trying to look at all these different reads, you know, all Thielen's doing out there is is running his route, you know, and that's that. So, you know, he's not back there getting hit, trying to avoid sacks, this and that. Like I said, I, I did like his his you know, diagnosis of the whole thing, but right. it was just, you know, as a former quarterback, he would know. So I get that, but, and, and I get that 
Cousins wants to try to make it right with his teammates, but you know, he was good last year and he had these same guys and yeah. you know, he threw them well, all over the place. He also I mean, did not say have he a was running good. Game. He was better, he, but he still wasn't better than he is now. last year. Dude, he had a really hot start to the season, and then it cooled off quickly, dude. So, like overall, last year was pretty mediocre for Cousins. Uh, it wasn't wasn't great, especially fantasy wise. Like he really tailed off at the end of the season. But uh, I mean, maybe that was Thielen's fault, like you're saying. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not blaming <laughs> Thielen for a damn thing here. Aside oh, from disappears. Well, yeah, I'm blaming him for his late season swoons in fantasy. Sure. Yes, I know. All right, but well, whatever. So drama, keep an eye on it. You know, yeah. who, who knows what'll come of it? But next thing we got here is uh, one of the most reliable kickers in the game, Mr. Steven Guskowski. Usually the first one drafted, or one of the top three drafted in leagues that still play with kickers, has hit the IR. Um, left hip injury has forced him out. So Patriots went out and picked another mediocre kicker named Mike Nugent. Uh, you may remember him from such disappointments as Cincinnati. Uh, and he had a couple solid years. Yeah. I mean, he was all right. Um, he did play, I think in Oakland last year for a little bit and had, I think he hit all of his field goals and missed one extra point or something. I mean, there's probably I like 10 field goals in Oakland, but you know, whatever. Well, exactly. So it's not his fault. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, what's what's your deal here? Are you picking up the Nuge? Dude, absolutely. If I don't have, you know, one of the top, you know, five, six, seven kickers, why not? Why not get the kicker on, you know, one of the better offenses in the league? I mean, that's that's how you that's how you do it, guys. Um, you know, it, I I I think I put him in number nine or ten this week, just for the week. Um, you know, but. A lot of that is because I probably think they're going to score 30 touchdowns against the Redskins and have to kick zero field goals. So perhaps I have them a little ranked a little too high. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if he plays a significant number of games, if not the is it is it the rest of the year for Gaskowski? I didn't actually look yeah. this up. Oh, I'm wow. pretty sure it is. Yeah. Then um, yeah, I, I mean, don't see any a reason hip why injury you for a kicker seems pretty decimating. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the injuries. I, I'll be honest. I slammed today at work. I didn't get the chance to look up a lot of the injuries. I I, I just saw that note and was just like, ah, AJ got it. So yeah. <laughs> I also figured it's a kicker. Whatever. We probably already spent too much time on this. Let's move yeah. on to some buy low, sell high. Something people are probably really more interested in. Do it. What, what do you think? Yeah, I'm game. All right, man. So buy low, sell high. So you and I, we wrote down a total of ten players. Five buy low, five sell high. Uh, so one quarterback each, two running backs each, and two receivers each. Um, am I starting? Want me to start? Yeah, go for it. All right, so I'm going with Mr. Baker Mayfield. Look, I get the disappointment in Baker Mayfield. People drafted him QB. Five, four, you know, I, I he was really high. He's currently quarterback number 23. Not good. The first few games were clearly atrocious with him. Um, last week, though, something clicked. And, you know, it, it's hard to say exactly what it was. Um you know, and, and it it was honestly, I mean, it, it was against a, a fairly good defense, too. I mean, like, the Ravens are nothing like what they used to be, but it's still the Ravens, dude, right? They're, they still have some games where they look legit, and um, they're not pushovers. You know, he struggled against, you know, he struggled against, like, the Rams, who, honestly, they're getting kind of smoked right now in the secondary against Seattle. Um yeah, uh, but I don't know, man. Something tells me like Mayfield's gonna figure this out. There is just too much talent on that team for him to not do it. Um, now the funny thing is, is that 
that game last week with Baker, uh, Odell Beckham didn't do much, man. Uh, you know, it's it's almost like the first few games they were just trying to make him, you know, Odell Beckham get him too involved, force the ball to to players like him, and they weren't just playing their game, you know. You can't do that in the NFL, right? It's just not going to work. So last week, Odell didn't really do a whole lot. Um, you know, two catches, 20 yards. In fact, I don't even think he had a target in the entire first half. Um, so, and then Baker goes out, throws 342 yards and a touchdown. It probably would have done more, but it was kind of a blowout. Um, you know, to, you know, the Ravens didn't really score until the fourth quarter, so they had 25, but it was over by then. So I don't know, man. I, I have, I still have faith in Baker that he's going to figure this out with the talents around him. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy that was drafted pretty high, you know, from the quarterback stance. So everyone was all in on him this year, and a lot of people have soured on him so far. Um, obviously that's changed a little bit with this last game, but you know, looking at at his counterpart here that we have on the slide, I'm saying sell high on Lamar Jackson, the guy that he faced last week, you know, or from the opposing team, Jackson has been phenomenal. I mean, he's, he's QB one right now, um, sitting at 112 fantasy points, you know, his completion percentage is at 65, He's got over 1,000, uh, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns to only two interceptions, but he does have 10 sacks. So, you know, that's a little worrisome. Um, you know, the other thing you got to look at is his, his schedule coming up. You know, he still has Pittsburgh this week, which is in Pittsburgh. That's this rivalry is isn't what it used to be but it's still going to be a knockdown drag out game um then he has cincy okay not not a tough matchup then he goes to seattle plays at home against new england has cincy again okay nice houston rams i mean it's gonna get tougher you know he he's played some pretty cupcake teams so far between miami arizona and kc is not you know, rough on opposing quarterbacks, you know, but they put up a ton of points. So not that big of a deal. Um, I, I just think you, you could get top dollar for him right now for someone who really needs a quarterback, someone who's sitting on like a Phil rivers uh, or, or worse, you know, like a cam one of their quarterbacks. I mean, there's yeah, I was so gonna many say, or like a cam Newton replacement. Uh, level player right now. Well, because there's also um, a lot of teams who drafted Lamar as their QB two just to draft a QB two, right? And, exactly. You know, like I, I, I'm with you, man. Sell Lamar or the other guy. Like I think Lamar's going to be fine. I think you can sort of rely yeah. on him, but but I get it. Like the value you should be able to get out of him compared to like if you have Matt Ryan as your QB one. Keep Matt Ryan, sell Lamar. People are just like drooling over Lamar at this point. I'm yeah. all with you, man. Like, get rid of him. Yep. Um, so let's move on to some running backs here. The uh, the first one we've got listed down for a buy low is Mr. James Connor. And and I get it, guys. This is a tough sell. You know, he's a little banged up right now. It's not. I don't think it's anything super serious. Uh, he he had a good game last week, but it still really hasn't. Still really hasn't been the James Conner a lot of people expected. But but I think this is going to ultimately get better. Now you might have to eat a week because he may not play this week. Yeah. But um, you know. Ah, man, my computer is moving just dreadfully slow right now. I can't pull anything up, so this is not good for me. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, my, my point was going to be something along the lines of, you know, he's still going to be a focal point in that offense. Mason Rudolph isn't going to carry that team by any means. Um, they're going to have to run the ball a lot. Um, now, yes, 
They look like they're trying to get Jalen Samuels involved quite a bit now. But this is still James Conner's backfield. Um, you know, it's... He, he's got... You know, he, he does have some fairly nice matchups coming up. Um, he's got the Miami game coming up in week eight. That's going to be pretty nice. Uh, you know, Indy's been not as tough as last year. The Rams or, or whatever. You know, he does play Cincy, he plays Arizona. Uh, you know, Buffalo's not a stout run defense. You know, week 15 and 16, by the way, guys. 14, 15, 16, by the way. Arizona, Buffalo, and the Jets. Now, people are scared of Buffalo's defense, but they're good in the secondary. They're not awesome against the run. So, yeah. like, if you're looking like a team who can make the playoffs and you can deal with a couple meh games out of Connor, dude, that playoff matchup are looking pretty nice. So, I'm taking a chance on Connor still. Yeah, I took that chance uh, in a trade uh, that just went down. I pushed through stupidly before the game started. Um, because Touchdown. this next guy I'm going to talk about, uh, burned me, burned me. <laughs> okay. Yes, he did. <laughs> I was a, uh, Democrat feeling the burn. Uh, no, boo. I was, yeah, that was I'm, poor. I'm, I'm not, a <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not for, I'm Bernie just Sanders saying that was either. poor. But anyway, bad whatever. Bad joke. So I'm talking about Mr. Uh, Mr. Nick Chubb. Um, you know, he wasn't really doing much until he decided to play Baltimore's defense. And, uh, I thought that was going to be a a tough matchup for him so much so that I believe I actually called him out last week in our, um, you know, sleepers and busts. I did. Dude. Yeah. I was going to say, do you really want to know? Cause yeah, you, you did. I, I know I did. I know I did. And Chubba I also Dub called Dub out. Is about to get drubbed. You had a nice yeah. little rhyme for it and everything. Yeah, I'm the yeah. one that got drubbed. So, <laughs> you know, that was, that's what I was setting myself up for. Um, also called out Robert Woods, and he finally showed up. So thanks for that. Hey, you want to you call out some of my players? I need some help. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you already beat me by one point. Four, six, That's nine all right. I got points. it right back last week. I lost by like 1.7. So it, it evened it. out. It evened out. Anyway, so right now in a half PPR, Chubb is sitting at running back four. Okay. That's pretty damn solid. Just under 400 yards total uh, for rushing. He's got just under 100 yards receiving. Um, four touchdowns rushing. Three of those came last week. Uh, and one of them was on an 80-some yard scamper. So Yes, it was. You know, you still have to look at the fact that they have Kareem Hunt, the fact that you just said buy low on Baker Mayfield, he's going to start throwing the ball. You know, he's going to end up splitting carries at the end of the season when you really need him, um, if not just flat out losing the job, which I, I don't necessarily see that. But nah, I doubt that. I, I think they're going to utilize both of these guys in kind of a Kamara Ingram esque, yeah, all New Orleans style offense. So I'm selling Chubb right now. His value after that game is sky high. So you can cash him in, maybe trade him and and like a wide receiver three or something to try to get you know one of the top guys. Yeah. So my other running back here for a buy low is. David Montgomery, and I know people are probably going, ew, what the hell? Uh, th- this really has nothing to do with how he's performed. He's been, look, we all know he's been mediocre. The offense has been mediocre. What I like here is the fact that through, or, or even just last week, right? Like, we've seen his snap share and his touches go up every week. Um, just last week, he had a 70% snap share. And he had 24 running back touches compared to Terry Cohen, who had seven. Yes, Cohen got the touchdown, but it was a, a reception. It wasn't in the running game. Dude, this, if, if, if you want to go after somebody who you could probably get, you know, I wouldn't say super cheap, but fairly cheap, 
and who could, is a running back one for his team, then I, I got to David Montgomery. I mean, look, the, the Bears are going to be ahead in more games than not just because their defense is incredible. So they're going to lean on David Montgomery, or at least they should, right? Um, should, yeah. And so, like, when you're getting that kind of volume, I, I want pieces of that. So I'm, I'm going to try to go after him. Yeah, I I uh I'm on board with that. You know, Montgomery hasn't really been in that shining position yet, but he's gonna get there. So next guy that I, I have big listed games are, big games are coming. Uh, yeah, exactly. So the next guy I have listed here, I just mentioned him, was uh <laughs> Mr. Mark Ingram. Now, Ingram, game one, again, Miami, okay. D League squad D put League up a squad. huge game. The junior varsity Un- squad, guys. Yeah. 107 <laughs> yards, two touchdowns, and then handed it off for garbage time. Week two against Arizona, eh? yeah, terrible. No touchdowns, less than 50 yards. Week three, huge game against KC. Again, tops 100 yards, and again, scores not twice, but three times. Huge. All right. Loving it. This past week, Cleveland, uh, he, he's a, you know, used butt plug, 71 yards, you know, and, and a two point conversion. I mean, what, what the hell is that? You know, now he goes up against Pittsburgh who has, uh, has only given up three rushing touchdowns to opposing running backs. And two of them were against Jeff Wilson, um, who only had 18 yards rushing, by the way. I mean, is that is that what we're looking at? 18 yards and two touchdowns for, the, for this <laughs> tough matchup? I mean, they still have a three-headed monster there. Uh, not really three-headed, but Gus Edwards is, is good. Um, and, uh, you know, you still got Justice Hill, too. Baltimore is a running first team, but Ingram is just this same feast or famine that he was when he was in New Orleans. So definitely tough. Um, but I, I do think that you can sell him on what he's done already. So I, I, I'm not against moving him if the, uh, if the price is right. Yeah. I mean, and, and just looking at the snap share, like, you know, I, I tend to not target players who are not getting a vast majority of their snap counts and, yeah, he was a 47, Gus Evers was a 28, Justice Hill was a 24. Now, they were behind a lot, so they were passing, so that has a lot to do with it. But again, like, it's got to be, you're right, it's got to be the perfect situation for Ingham to really kind of feast. Um, he only had 13 touches to Evers 7, to Hills 4. So, yeah, Ingram's going to have some monster games, but he's going to be very inconsistent, too. So, I, I, I don't disagree with you there. Um, so... Moving on to some wide receivers here. This was tough. I, you know, you, you wrote the notes down initially, and, and I and I left this one here, but I, I, it's a tough one because he's got the turf toe. Devontae Adams. Um, you know, peop, there is still that level of disappointment with him. Uh, you know, he had the really big week against, and we kind of called it, right? Like, he's going to eat against Philly's secondary. We all knew that was coming. Uh, now, I got the turf toe, so I, I don't think he's going to play this week. I'm not really sure when he's coming back, but it's, it doesn't appear it's going to be super long. Um, so, you know, now is even more of a chance where you can just, like, buy the opportunity. If you can take a week or two without this guy, um, then then I think you should be able to do it. Because, I mean, he's just too good. He's too talented. Um, Rodgers is going to find his guy. I mean, you can tell – this first series of the game, he was just like, nope, I'm giving you the ball, Devontae. Figure it out. <laughs> and, uh, but, I mean, so far this year, man, you know, the targets are there, but just the, the stats have not been. I mean, granted, Chicago, Denver was one down game. Uh, but, you know, he, he's he got some, some better matchups coming up. All right, if he can get healthy, you know, he gets Detroit. Um, now, Darius Slay, who knows if he's going to play that game. He was out last week, so I, I, I'm guessing he'll be back by week six. You know, he gets Oakland, he gets Kansas City. Uh, Chargers not good. You know, 
He gets San Fran, he gets the Giants, he gets Washington. That's going to be a cupcake game. Unfortunately for him, you know, playoffs aren't great. Minnesota, Chicago, where he started out being kind of meh. But, you know, we'll see. Um, if you can get a good price for Devontae Adams, I think you take it um, easily. So, I still I still think he's too good to be to be this average uh, the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first guy I got listed here is, um, you know, Mr. High School Popularity Contest, Mike Evans. Look, I, I mean, I get it. The hype is there. The stats are there. Uh, he's been, he's been awesome so far this year. Um, so, that's the whole point of buy low, sell high. Uh, he's been awesome, but will it continue? I mean, we've seen in the past with Mike Evans that he cannot maintain. Um, and he is you know, in the league I'm looking at in Yahoo. He is just behind his teammate, Chris Godwin. Um, now, it is possible that both of these guys finish, you know, as top five guys or top 10 guys um, where they are right now. They're in the top five. And again, in this specific league. Um, so it, it's, it's likely that this could maintain, but you also have to look at what he's got coming up schedule wise. And you know, it's, it's not great come playoff time. If my computer would, bring his thing up um i, I want to say he's got indy um possibly airs not airs my, my mind's working a little bit faster here it just seems right, like yeah. so yeah week 14 15 it. 16 it's indy detroit and houston so fairly fairly decent matchups um i mean detroit can can be tough um but that's not a juggernaut defense per se yeah. so that's that's okay yeah, so he's my pick to for number one sell high. All right, so my my last one here is a guy that you know I, I'm still not really sure if you're going to be able to you know it depends on your league, right? I mean, like in our kind of leagues, our staff league, I don't think anybody's going to give you you know pennies on the dollar or even you know quarters of the dollar for this guy. But Devon, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, it's take away week one. He's not been good, man. Um, and I think teams have just figured out blitz the living hell out of them because they can't stop you. And they're just under, you know they're just under siege there behind the behind the line. They have no run game at all. I mean, Carlos Hyde really. The Duke Johnson experiment has failed again. Um, I mean, look, at the same time, though, this guy's just too good. He's too talented. He's just he's still seeing too many targets. Uh, the, he's going to just go on a touchdown binge, you can tell here. I mean, Atlanta, Kansas City, Indy, Oakland. Even Jacksonville isn't like a top notch defense anymore. Like that's doable, right? Baltimore, same thing. It doesn't really get tough for them. New England and Denver are the two toughest, maybe Tennessee. Two toughest defenses. Yeah, right around playoff time is sort of in playoff time. But then you get week 16 against Tampa. Like, man, if you can get to week 16 with him, yes. <laughs> it's just. You know that's that's the type of thing you got to realize here. Um, it's he's just too talented. I, I'm I'm still all in on on Hopkins. He's just such a talented receiver. They're gonna figure it out. Yeah, there's too much too much there for that team to not figure it out at this point. Um, so the next the next two guys we have on the slide here, I'm actually lumping together because they're both with Kansas City. Um, that's Sammy Watkins and Demarcus Robinson. Uh, you know, Tyreek Hill is almost 
possibly ready to come back as early as this week. It still hasn't come out that that's the case. Um, but once he's back, you know he's going to be the go-to every other play uh, for for Pat Mahomes, you know. And, and between that, you still have Kelsey there. So I think these guys are going to be more decoys at that point. Um, with Sammy, I mean, you, you take away his week one. Same thing with Nuck. It, dude, he's been very average. Uh, 49 yards on six receptions, you know, uh, 64 yards on five receptions, and then 54 yards on three receptions. No touchdowns. So that is not worth anything for you right now. You know, and then Robinson has 14 receptions on the year on 21 targets. You know, only 250 yards. But again, he has three touchdowns. Both of these guys have been touchdown dependent. And I mean, it's still a high power offense. Are they going to somehow score more touchdowns throughout the season? Yes. Uh, Barring a season ending injury this week before they score a touchdown. Yes, they're going to score again. But, I mean, you can't be trotting guys out there as a wide receiver, too, uh, for 49, 64, and 54 yards. And the last, the last point I want to make real quick is their final, uh, you know, their bye week is the final week before the playoffs start, basically. You have week, week 12 bye, then they go see Oakland the week before the playoffs start. And the playoff weeks, they have New England, they have mm-hmm. Denver, and they have Chicago. Oof. That is brutal. I mean, Kansas That's City of be all brutal teams. for Hill owners. Yeah, I mean, but, Kansas City out of all teams can like figure out how to exploit those matchups if it's at all possible. But uh, yeah, it's that's. That's not a pretty. That's not a pretty playoff matchup. Uh, I mean, the, the, they could do well against Oakland, but you know, here again, sure. he's already played against Oakland without Tyreek Hill in Week Two, and he put up six for forty-nine on thirteen targets, mind you. He had a ton of targets in that game, dude. Just, I mean, come catches. on. We we. <laughs> I mean, I think was it the Bob Lung one where we talked about Sammy and guys like yeah. that, where they're just. They're just not reliable. And, like, Sammy, he's not a wide receiver one. He just, period, he's not. No. Um, so, it, it, weird to say, it might actually do him good to get Tyreek Hill back. Um, in fact, I think it's going to do that offense as a whole. You know, like, the other players, except for Robinson and Hardman, to get him back. Because I think... Kelsey hasn't done exactly what we were thinking he was going to do so far up to this point. No. Um, not that anybody's panicking at Kelsey, but, you know, you were hoping for more. In fact, I, I don't know if this happens in front of me. I don't think Kelsey has even scored yet this year. Uh, but, he, but he's done okay. Um, but, you know, Watkins might just thrive more as a two in this offense. But, you know, they utilize a running back so much. It's just... Even with, with without Hill, Watkins just isn't the guy. I mean, this is all there is to it. So, all right, let's move on here. We got a lot of injury news to talk about. Uh, it's, you know, Kelsey has one touchdown. Does he have one? What, what yeah. week was it? Week two against Oakland. Okay. All right. Seven one oh seven and a touchdown. Fair enough. All righty, let's move on to some injury news. So. Kind of broke it down into little categories here. So we're going to talk about a bunch of guys who they've either been called out. There's only one guy. Or kind of up in the air, right? So they're, they're probable, questionable. And there's no probable anymore. So questionable. Uh, first off, John Ross on the IL with a collarbone issue. He is absolutely out. Um, are they saying he can return? I don't know why. I didn't write that down. I think they're saying he yeah, could return. I, I think I think he is eligible to return from the IR, but yeah, that's that's uh, still a tough one. But um, yeah, not not the name. But he, like, I mean, John no, Ross. He's good, like he's just, he's like Sammy Watkins. You know, he yeah, he had two monster of games to start the season, and then he disappeared. Yeah, he had two monster games to start the season, but after that, man, he, he just kind of disappeared, like you just said. Um, 
Yeah. So moving on, unknown Tyreek Hill, as you kind of alluded to earlier, practiced. He did practice Wednesday. Uh, didn't get the updated today, but I'm just assuming he practiced today. Um, Kansas City, they're not gonna. They haven't commented on his availability for Sunday though, so you got to keep an eye out for that. If he's in, you 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 put him in your lineup, right? I mean, there's no doubt. I, yeah, I think you have to. I mean, right? even if he's just used as a decoy he could still end up getting, you know, one catch on four targets for 89 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, I, I would take that. <laughs> yeah, same, same Darnold. Um, he has yet to be cleared for contact, so still kind of up in the air as to whether or not he'll play. Uh, Tyra Williams, he's dealing with a foot injury, but is hoping to play. They're hoping he'll play after just kind of resting this week, but I, I think it's still kind of 50-50. Um couple Pittsburgh Steelers here. We got Juju Smith-Schuster. He missed practice Thursday with a toe injury. And then, as I mentioned earlier, James Connors hurt. Uh, he's got an ankle injury. He missed practice on Thursday as well. So they're both questionable and on the wrong side of questionable at this point. They've got to get a practice in, you know, tomorrow, you know, Friday, or, you know, I guess if they do a walkthrough on Saturday or something. Um, yeah, I saw it. Connor ended up getting saddled with a doubtful. Oh, has he been um, doubtful now? I did yeah, not he's been that. downgraded. So yeah, that's 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 a likely out, which we're getting to here. So good segue, yeah. I guess. So the likely out here, we've got Jarvis Landry. Um, he's he remains in the concussion protocol as of Thursday morning. So not looking good for him to get cleared in time. <clears throat> Devontae Adams. As I mentioned earlier, too, he's dealing with the turf toe. Um, you know, he, he he limped off pretty badly, and they haven't set a timetable yet. But I just feel like this is at least a couple of weeks for him. Um, so that's pretty unfortunate. Uh, Jamal Williams, do bad injury, dealing with a concussion and neck injury after week four this game. I got just rocked right in the head, dude. Um, yeah, it's a brutal game. I too. mean, dude, it could be a lot worse for him. He could, it, 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 he got carted off. It was, it was pretty, pretty bad looking. So, I mean, thankfully he's okay overall. Um, he could, you know, he could be dealing with, you know, spinal injuries and things like that that you just never want to hear about. So, uh, he is, ah, you put likely out. I, I'm going to go with he's out. Um, yeah. Case Keenum, <laughs> you've got here is an injury, uh, in, injury to the um, uh, ego. I don't know. Ego, the... yeah, that's the word I was trying to say. He he was pulled from last week's game. Uh, I guess rightfully so. He wasn't playing well, although I, I don't know how much of that was really his fault. This whole team is just kind of falling apart. Um, so Flat he was pulled from last week's game. He shit. does have a foot injury. So, yes, he needs to be on the injury list, but he's not playing this game. So, Gurley, I'm finally catching up, scored. There was definitely zeros on the play clock. They oh, really? That, I didn't. I was, reading, I was reading our notes and did not get to see the play. Yeah, it was like, oh, wide open. Yeah. And he's in. A little 70 yard scamper. Alrighty. I oh, know. 12, 12 yards. So, yeah, back to Case Keenum and his Redskins offense here. So, he's not going to play. This is either going to be Dwayne Haskins or we might be looking at a Colt McCoy start. Right? Uh, McCoy in the house here. I, dude, honestly, I I don't know which one. As a, as a guess, I got to be a Redskins fan still. Um <sighs> Why? Why I do you know. do this? To I yourself? don't know. I'm loyal, supposedly. Oh, um, so, like, you're not starting any of these guys. Dwayne Haskins look atrocious, man. <laughs> Just, yeah. <laughs> Haskins look atrocious, as I fully expected him to. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm wondering, like, what your thought is of this offense. You know, McLaurin had a lot of hype behind him for the first few weeks. 
I mean, clearly the running game is just nothing. But like I, you know, Richardson's done okay. I mean, but can you trust those guys with a Colt McCoy or a Haskins? I mean, I I have to bring this up, and this is the perfect segue to do it since we're talking Redskins. Best team name for 2019 that I've seen so far and have stolen to use in one of my leagues, Sausage Egg McLaren. <laughs> <laughs> and I made a little avatar of him at practice, and I photoshopped a Sausage Egg McMuffin on top of his body. So it's uh, that's his head. All righty. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think this offense is absolute joke. Um, I don't know which is worse, them or Miami. Uh, that's, we'll find that's out in two weeks. Brutal. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the first 0 0 tie <laughs> that we see in the oh. NFL. Or, or, write it down, it will beat the Rams Chiefs game of last year. <laughs> And they'll score 212 no, points combined. No, that's not possible. That won't. No, there's no way that that's gonna happen. I know. It's it, uh, I'll take the under. Um, can yeah, I put money I, I down know. on the Miami Dolphins winning that game right now? They actually do better. Yeah, they do. That's that's it's sad. Something that I Very didn't think sad. anyone would ever say. No. The best part about their week this week is that they can't lose because they're on the bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. It's like, all right, vacation. Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be bad, man. Like we go to South Beach. I think, dude. I think owners of McLaurin and Richardson and Chris Thompson they are praying for Cole McCoy. Is that great? I like McCoy, but he's dude. fine. You, like he's he not in, bad. He, he just to... he he's a ball of energy. That's what this fucking team needs. Like they need it, and and he's gonna just come in, and he's gonna you know be a little like running around nonsense, throwing the ball, doing stuff, making plays, and then he's probably gonna get in. Yeah, he's in probably the gonna get because that's what he does. Um, but uh, yeah, know, it'll I be don't fun know, while it lasts. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets put back in Haskins and watch him throw three interceptions like an idiot. Ugh. All right, moving on. More quarterback news. Mitch Trubisky dealing with a dislocated shoulder and a slight labrum tear. Does not throw any shoulder. Right now they're saying he's going to be back around week seven. So they I think they have a game this week. I think they're on bye next week. And then he'll be back in week seven. So could have been a lot worse. It looked a lot worse. Um, so you're kind of in luck there. Not that anybody was starting to risk at this point. Um, Marlon Mack was the last guy I wrote down likely out. It seems like he would remain sidelined on Thursday and he's really got to get into practice on, uh, on Friday to, to play. So I'll let you finish up here. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You just highlighted Christian, Christian Kirk. Kirk. Sorry. Skip, skip it. Sorry, man. I, whatever. Doubtful for um, this weekend. Yeah. He didn't practice. He's got, Whatever. I think it's an ankle injury. Yeah, he's probably not playing. So, right. so let's uh, let's flip the script here and go with a little positive news or optimistic news, I guess I would call it. Uh, Saquon Barkley somehow has a chance to play this weekend. No, don't I'm do not it. Buying it, I think it is absolutely stupid to bring him back this quickly. Just from don't this do it, New York. Keith, Potential you're there. Ankle sprain. Come on, man. Uh, I mean, you gotta have no. connections. Don't let this happen. I don't disagree. <laughs> There's no reason. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to smartly bring him back when yeah. we're ready to smartly bring him back. Yeah. Just wait. That's as stupid as me using air quotes for that entire thing. No, stop being an idiot. <laughs> this guy is your franchise running back. You're gonna break his ankle even <clears throat> further. Um, on uh, during a practice, like just wait. What the hell do you have to play for? You got Danny Dimes out there dropping bombs on Washington, like everyone will. But hey, why? Why do we have to take more Dimes to Washington? 
Thanks, man. All right, what? moving on. Moving I mean, Eagles, on. Yeah, that's what we Mo- do. Moving on. Moving on. So whatever. <laughs> Saquon is a possible return. No, but I don't see it. Um, likely out. A, a a likely return is Damian Williams. Um, he was a full participant at Wednesday's practice. I did not catch what he did today. I would assume he was a full participant again. Um, so he's probable for this week uh, after dealing with that knee what injury. What do you do with McCoy? Do you start him also? He's dealing with his own, I believe, yeah, ankle been, injury. He's still. been dealing with that forever. He plays. So but like, do you play he both plays, of them? He's been good. But do you play both Damian and McCoy? I mean, come on, think about it. McCoy and Daryl Williams were both good. I think Daryl Williams they were at this point. I, I, but do you play yeah, Damian and McCoy? If, if McCoy is healthy enough to play, then Daryl Williams totally gets a, a knockdown. He, he's the new Darwin Thompson. Um, but I, I wouldn't drop him like I did Darwin, but I would, I would just leave him on the bench until one of these guys gets injured again. I, I think you can play both of them. Um. Yeah. I mean, why not? Whatever. All right. Moving on. So then we got. Uh, we already talked about Terry Sausage Egg McLaurin. By the way, that is a pretty terrible nickname. I I like Terry F one McLaurin. Yeah, that's that's okay. Better than Scary Terry, right? Oh, that's, that's the worst. Yeah. All I can think like, of are okay, those. Well, we're in October. Halloween's coming. I guess. No. 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 I'm, I'm, no. I might get his jersey and be Sausage Egg McLaurin for, for Halloween, though. That's pretty sad. God, please invite me out with you. I want to see that. <laughs> please invite me out with you. I want to see that. Uh, so, anyway, he's dealing with that hammy. Uh, he was limited practice on Wednesday, but he is likely to return this week. Michael Gallup also dealing with a knee injury. Um, he looks ready to return on Sunday, bearing a setback. Uh, last I saw, he was probable. Uh, Josh Allen has now practiced for the second straight day, um, Wednesday and today, Thursday. So he's fully in line with everything with the concussion protocol and uh, looks like he could possibly play Sunday as long as he maintains on that path. Uh, Devin Singletary, uh, also with Buffalo, dealing with the hammy. He had the potential to return last week, according to um, Sean McDermott. But ultimately, he stayed out of the game. Um, he could be back this week, though. So keep an eye on him. And then uh, T.Y. Hilton was another one. Last last minute ad we had on here with a quad. He did return to practice today, Thursday. So mm-hmm. that bodes well for for his uh, his playing this week. Yep. So next up, we uh, you know we like to go through the Scott Fishbowl waivers. Uh, it was a pretty quiet week, uh, and it's probably going to get quieter and quieter as the season goes on. There'll be some bigger weeks coming up, but it's going to be not not quite as active as the first two weeks. The big ad this week was obviously Chase Daniel, um, but again, only twenty seven dollars. I think a lot of teams are just kind of desperate at quarterback, but there's been a lot of money spent in a lot of these leagues, so. Yeah. Uh, the teams that are going out and reaching for Chase Daniel are the ones that have lost Breeze, Big Ben, you name it. And, um, you know, that that's why his price was probably the highest. Uh, the, the, the move I like the most out of all of these is Alden Tate. Um, $16, that's dirt cheap for a guy yeah. who, who's been good. I know everybody's worried about, you know, obviously Boyd's still there. Um uh, AJ Green's coming back eventually, I think. Uh, but, you know, John Ross is just done for probably some time. All it take could have a bunch of good weeks here on a team that's going to have to pass a lot. And then uh, Ricky Seals Jones, you know, this is just the tight end happy league that everybody's just going bonkers on tight ends. So only $6, $7, whatever. But, uh, yeah. It is funny though. In one of my dynasty leagues, apparently somebody did not get the memo that Chase that Mr. Trubisky's only out a couple of weeks. Spent all one hundred of his dollars on Chase Daniel. I have no idea why. I had to look at his roster to know if like Trubisky was his only quarterback or something. But that's just that's, <laughs> insane. That is not a smart thing to do. No. 
All right, man, let's finish up here. Week five picks. I'll let you lead this week. What you got for highest and lowest scoring game? Let's get both. I, I just have to quickly chime in that I feel like me me doing this really reminds me of, my name is Matt Foley and I'm a motivational speaker. <laughs> uh, love Chris Farley. Anyway, so my highest scoring fantasy game, I'm going, with, uh, <laughs> I'm going with... I'm going with... The ATL at the Houston game. Uh, each of these turd teams only mustered 10 points in week four. Don't do it again, guys. There's, there's way too much talent on both of these teams. And I just don't see that happening again. I, I really hope this turns out to be like a really big <coughs> barn burner of a game. Um, but I, I don't know. My lowest scoring game is... Uh, Going to be over in foggy, foggy London town with Chicago and Oak Town. Chicago's D is stingy AF. How do you like me now, Dan Orlowski? I can do that too. Um, games being played in London. We've seen what happens when teams go to London. It's hit or miss and mostly miss. Unless um, you're Jacksonville. Uh, yeah, unless you're Jacksonville, but they're an East Coast team. Neither of these teams is East Coast. Oakland's got to fly halfway around the damn world. That's crazy, dude. I mean, uh, I feel bad. For I that. don't know which way is easier, flying over China or over the United States. I, I'm kidding, I do, but <laughs> it's it's not going to be a pretty game. Um, Stop I feel it, Kyrie. Sorry, I feel sorry for for brexit right now and uh all that they have going on what is going on all right you're not talking all right kai scoring fantasy game for me in week five i just gotta give a big segue for you stop it dude you're weird (laughs) um are you drinking before the show no not tonight Anyway. It may have happened in other nights, but not tonight. Of course it has other nights. I've realized that. <laughs> anyway, Cardinals and Bengals. I mean, this isn't because I love either offense. It's really just because neither of the defenses are any good. So this could You're just be one of those. on Mixon because you have the same first name. Let's just be honest. I mean, he is like the coolest football player out there. No, no. Um, <laughs> close. Wrong. Yeah. Uh, no, seriously, though, like, it's just going to be, like, I just feel like this is going to be one of those, like, sneaky high-scoring games where, like, uh, you know, boy can score, take a score, you're going to get a Fitzgerald score, you're going to get a David Johnson. It's going to be, like, a 35-30 to 30 game. And you're going to be like, oh, crap, why did I have no exposure to that one? Because it's the Cardinals and the Bengals, and you just ignore those two teams. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. Uh, my lowest scoring game is Bills and Titans. Like I've got both of these defenses ranked in the top five this week. This is gonna be an ugly game. The Titans went up yeah. and blew up last week. Uh, I'm not. I'm not expecting that again at all. To a Bills defense who just stopped New England to 16 points. Um, not yeah. happening. And you know the Titans on you know have a, a, a pretty stout defense themselves. So this is this is going to be pretty ugly. And if Josh Allen is out, it's going to be even worse. So It's going to be the Matt Barkley show. So yippee! All right. That'll be fun. Yeah. They will be checking down to Cole Beasley every play. Yeah, no like kidding. he did towards the end of that game last week. And Yeah, by the way, another sell high. If you have Cole Beasley, go ahead and do that one. Yeah. Um, all right. Sleepers, quarterback. Quarterback, I got Jameis. Jameis Winston. Dude has been straight up balling the past two weeks. He's got a 65% completion mm-hmm. rate. He's got 765 passing yards, a 7 to 2 touchdown interception ratio. And aside from, from Dak, New Orleans has given up nearly 1,050 total yards. That's rushing and passing. And 10 total touchdowns to Watson, Goff, and Wilson. All top-notch quarterbacks. Um, You know, Winston's not necessarily on their level, but he has been lately. And with Bruce Arians finally getting through to all of these guys, 
that offense is nasty right now. So I like Winston. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, mine is going back to one of my buy low guys, and it's Baker. I think I said enough there, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep with the with the Baker love and just say this is gonna this is gonna keep going. It's gonna keep rolling. My running back here, I'm going with a uh, dude you alluded to earlier, and that's Connor's backup, Jalen Samuels. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is uh, in back-to-back weeks, Baltimore has given up double-digit fantasy points to their opponent's running back, too. Uh, Samuels is coming off his best week of the season last week. And, uh, you know, I just think that especially if, if Connor is out, which I wrote this down yesterday before the news broke on Connor. So that even further cements this as a solid, you know, sleeper pick that might not be a sleeper as it sounds. Have to get your reaction on that play in a second. Um, Give me 10 minutes. My running back. (laughs) Yeah, give me 10 minutes. Good job, Amazon. (laughs) Yeah. My running back is Chris Thompson. As I said, man, like, you know, the the offense is going to struggle. But, like, the one guy who feels safe on this team is still Chris Thompson. And even in a game where it is a total blowout, I'm already calling it, shocker, um, against New England, they're going to be passing a thousand times this game. And Chris Thompson's seen 28 targets so far this season. So, yeah, he may not score, may not rack up a lot of yards, but you could legit see like an eight for sixty game out of him. And in a PPR league, that's fine. Like you're you're happy with that. So I'm going Chris Johnson. Sorry, right, I'm looking at this play now. Touchdown. <laughs> that lock it. Oh more. That was not that was not lock it, yeah. It's, it's no, more. It's David Moore. More. Stupid. Uh, All right. I mean, I was anyway. just going to say good play, but sure. I mean, whatever. You can say stupid. No, well, I picked Seattle to win, so I, I'm I'm happy with this uh, with this scoring. All right, wide receiver. All right, wide receiver guy you just mentioned, Cole Beasley. Um, two t- double digit targets the past two weeks, uh, and, and if Barkley does end up playing, he's going to be the safety net. Uh, between him and um, Dawson Knox, so oh, it seems like he's the safety net even for Allen. I mean, double well, targets the last is, two weeks. Regardless. I mean, in general, I, I think you know, I if the NFL decides to do like a players weekend, like the M- MLB does. I mean, every weekend is kind of all their games, but whatever. If they pick week eight and do players weekend, his uh, his jersey will be safety net. Where they pick the nicknames. You know, yeah, I, I get it. I'm just that's, I'm not re- that's the re- thing re- where the players they, re- they go. Re- they expect me to laugh because I'm not pick laughing. nicknames. Okay, and, I'm just gonna yeah. move. All right, and it's, I know. Yep. It's on the jerseys. Yep. Yeah. You okay. know when you have to explain a joke, it's bad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, do. I totally do. <laughs> uh, get out I of beat here. an asshole. Yep. Uh, yep. Oh yeah. All How right. Alden Tate is my receiver. Yeah, go risk. Fuck you. <laughs> um, Alden Tate is my <coughs> is my receiver sleeper. Uh, he's seen 16 targets over the last two games. Arizona defense, as I said earlier, is just not good. Um, John Ross missing. AJ Green's not back. This could be a big game for him, even though he's had a couple big games now so far. Not big, but good, you know, good game so far. So. This could be this could be a big one. You might want to slide him in your flex if you got him on your bench. Indeed. All right, on to the busts. Um, this this list is going to sound a little familiar. Um, just want to throw <laughs> that out there now. Quarterback bust. Lamar Jackson. I mean, come on, you're still starting the guy, uh, but to me, I, I think you need to temper your expectations a bit for for this matchup. I mean, this is back-to-back weeks uh, that they're playing divisional matchups. This is in Pittsburgh. This could be a fairly low scoring game. So I I just, you're going to start him, but don't be surprised if he, you know, gets you less than 
20, 18 points. No doubt there. Um, my quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, he's still ranked in like the top, I think it was the top 10. Yeah. Which is kind of surprising. Facing Dallas, um, I defense is good there. It's not going to have Adams this week, most likely. It's just no bueno for me, man. Just, I, hopefully you can find something better or you had a backup quarterback on your team if you drafted Rodgers and you could just plug them in this week. I'm not feeling Rodgers at all this week, man. Yeah, that's a solid pick. I, I was debating on picking him, but I know I picked him a couple weeks ago too. So I figured I'd switch it up and go with, I think I picked go with the shock in like eight weeks in a row last year. So just, Probably. just go for it. Probably. Uh, <laughs> so again, familiar name already mentioned, Mark Ingram sticking with this Pittsburgh-Baltimore game. Um, but Pittsburgh hasn't allowed any running back to gain over 70 yards this year. And again, they've only given up three touchdowns to opposing running backs, and two of those were to Jeff Wilson and his 18 yards. So, I mean, Ingram might buck that trend and find the end zone if they get down, you know, within the five. But I just don't – I don't know if I see a big, you know, every other week is a big game kind of game out of Ingram this week. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, mine, dude, I had a tough time picking a running back this bus this week, I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, I went with Le'Veon Bell, and I know people are going, what is against Philly? They're terrible on defense. Huh? They are. But because they're so bad in the secondary, teams don't run on them. Now, this could totally backfire on me because the Jets can't pass the ball, especially if Donald does not come back, right? But I'm going on on a limb and saying that Darnold's going to be cleared and he'll be fine and he'll they'll be able to pass the ball way better than with Luke Falk. Um, and left Bell's going to struggle. Um, you know, the Philly has the top run defense according to DVOA. Um, so that's, that surprises the hell out of me. That too. It was, dude, I looked at it and was like, <laughs> I are read you that, kidding I was me? Like, yeah, I mean, okay. the, the one thing is, is that, you know, he could save face, especially in, like, PPR leagues, because he'll probably get a lot of checkdowns yeah. and, and things like that. But, you know, I think people are expecting big things out of Love Bell this week because it is Philly's defense, and they're exploited a lot. Um, but, yeah, it's just one of those, like, meh, not feeling it, for whatever reason. Yeah. All right, so my receiver bust here... Um, I'm going with Tyler Boyd. Uh, Arizona has allowed two receivers to eclipse 60 yards this year. Two. That's Danny Amendola in week one had 104 yards. And then Hollywood Brown had 86 yards. But they have seeded four touchdowns to the receivers in 2019. One of those went to Amendola as well. So, you know, Boyd could find the end zone. Um, you think this is going to be a high-scoring game, so maybe it is, and I'm totally wrong on Boyd. Hoping that I am on uh, all three of my busts, actually, this week, playing the same game I did last week, because I own all of these guys in a lot of leagues. So, reverse Juju Smith-Schuster and do something. No, they're my busts. Yeah. I just wonder with Boyd if it's like one of those... Yeah, or with Arizona, sorry, is what I had to say, like, they haven't allowed a lot of receiving yards because they've allowed so much. On the, you know, they get behind so quickly. Teams stop running the ball against them or stop passing the ball against them. They just run, right? They're like, it could be one of those. Um, yeah. And so this game yeah. could be, like, weirdly close because they're both just bad. Um, <laughs> so Tyler Boy is going to stay active. Um, yeah, it, it's a weird one. So... Was that Gurley again? Uh, it was. No. Oh, Everett. That play before that to Everett was phenomenal. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, you'll have to find the replay. They'll probably show it again later. Yeah. All right, let's finish yep, up Gurley. here. Amari Cooper. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't. I pick on him a lot. Um, and I'm wrong a lot, apparently. Especially this year. Amari Cooper. Dude, the Packers defense is still 
pretty good, despite them struggling last week. Tyron Smith is going to be out this week, and I, I couldn't find the stat. I wanted to see the stat that I think Monday night, or was it, was it Monday or Sunday night that the Cowboys and Saints played? Whenever Tyron yeah, Smith got Sunday hurt, night. they put up a stat like almost immediately saying the amount of like yards per attempt and like number of seconds that Dak had to throw without Tyron compared to with Tyron Smith there were like crazy different. Um, so much so that like Dak becomes an average quarterback. And I mean, that's, that's going to affect Cooper big time. Uh, yeah. He's not going to be able to get downfield as much. Uh, and so I just think people are expecting, especially after a down week on the pack defense, that Cooper and Dak and Zeke are going to eat. It, I just don't see it. I think this is going to be another tight ball game, another low-scoring ball game for probably both of these teams. And, um, yeah, so Mark Cooper is my bust, just because I like – also just because I like picking on him. <laughs> All right, so defense. last uh, last things we got here is defense. I'm going with Kansas City. Uh, I wanted to pick Philly. They were actually under just under 40% before the waivers kicked in, and now they were up to like 81% owned uh, uh, when I checked it earlier. So that was uh, I got them in two leagues. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I got them in at least one, maybe two as well. Um, but Kansas City... Again, Hilton is kind of iffy. Mac is slightly banged up. You know, they're playing in Kansas City, though. Under the lights of prime time, you know, things just don't look good for Indy this week. Um, you know, no, so they'll I, lose, but I see. Yeah, but I, I just think I just think that Casey's defense is going to step up at home and uh, and really shut them down. <laughs> Mine's a shocking one that I didn't really expect to pick, but it's it's going to be Tampa Bay. Um, the play in New Orleans. Um, like the Bucks haven't been awful this year um, on defense. Like, they're still not great. But New Orleans is still starting Bridgewater. There's, you know, there's no breeze. The offense isn't going to be what... You know what it was with Breeze there, and and I think the Bucks can make some noise. Uh, you know, make a difference there. That, yeah, that's could be probably interesting. probably one of my least favorite streamer picks. Um, I, I just there wasn't a lot out there. You, you, you no, yeah, it really, it really it wasn't. Just wasn't it, it was a tough week. <laughs> I was you know, debating on the Cincy D, but again, like yeah, you said, that thing could Ty- twist around. Tyler Thompson so. said it fantastically in his Streamomatic article, uh, which you can see on the. <laughs> if you're wondering, watching what the hell the Streamomatic column is in the in the slide, that is alluding to Tyler Thompson's Streamomatic article, where he does all this calculation using DVOA and Pro Football Focus stuff and. Uh, or no, maybe not that. I don't know what he uses. I know it's DVOA, and he uses like, uh, like Vegas lines and things like that to calculate a defensive score for the week, so that you can go out and pick the best streaming defense available. Um, shockingly enough, the box are third highest on this list for defenses. Uh, the last, what is this? Twelve defenses on the list. So under 50%. Was, oh, under fifty percent. Okay, yeah, top, thanks, top Keith. Under fifty percent. Okay, yeah. So we we don't we only go to forty percent when we pick, but that's cool. Anyway, um, but yeah. So you know, it's he said it where it was like this is a bad week where like two of the worst defenses are playing each other: Bengals and Arizona. Miami's on bye, so it's just like you know, three of the defenses that you normally would pick on. They're not there. They're not options. So it's it was a tough week to pick a streaming defense. So this is one of those weeks where you just hope you have a good defense that you can you can play or somebody that you trust better than these options, in, in my opinion. So anyway, um, got anything else to close out with, AJ? No, I'm good, man. All right. That's it for me. See you all next week. Good luck in week five. Peace.